In this tutorial we're going to look at optimizing images in Illustrator and first of all we're just going to look at the Save for Web dialog box in Illustrator. We've already looked at it in Photoshop but it's slightly different here in Illustrator. So if we open up the Save for Web dialog box it's actually a separate application. Adobe used to have a program called Image Ready which was what they used for optimizing image graphics and creating animated GIFs, but um, since then they've combined this software into Photoshop and Illustrator um, so that you can save for web from directly within the programs. So on the top left we can see there's a set of sub tools. You've got the hand tool, the slice tool, the zoom and the eyedropper. And at the top, like in Photoshop, you've got the original tab, the optimized, the two up and the four up tabs. So the idea of Save for Web is trying to find the perfect balance between file size and image quality and you can't have one without sacrificing the other. So if you have a small file size you're going to lose image quality. If you have the best image quality you're going to have a big file size. So trying to get that balance right is the challenge with Save for Web. So Illustrator's export options are slightly different to Photoshop. So you've got the JPEG, GIF, um, and so on. But you've also got SWF and SVG, which you don't have in Photoshop. These are vector-based graphic export options. You've also got the color table on the right here. You've got image size tab and you've got the layers tab, which are both slightly different from Photoshop. Um, on the bottom, the preview and browser button is in a different position than in Photoshop. And you've still got the done button here as well. Also, if you hold down the Alt key, the cancel button changes to the reset button. So just to quickly go through the different file types, you've got GIFs as we had a look at in the Photoshop tutorial, which are best for images with flat colors like logos and anything that uses flat graphics. GIFs have one bit transparency, which means that one of the colors in your image can become a transparent layer. Uh, which means you'll be able to see through anywhere that that color exists. So to do that you can just use the eyedropper tool, select the color you want to become transparent and tick the transparency box and the GIF will automatically enable that transparency for you. Moving on to JPEGs. JPEGs are a lossy format which means that they're compressed and they lose quality each time that they're saved, quite like a photocopy. If you photocopy a photocopy you're going to lose quality each time. JPEGs don't work very well with images that use solid colors like logos. They're ideal for photographs. So that's what people generally use them for. And they're also very good for images that use gradients or filter effects. Anything that uses a lot of different tonalities and shades of color. Pings or PNGs are like a mixture of GIFs and JPEGs, but they're mostly for use with transparency. So if you need to have transparency in your image, PNG24 is probably the file type you're going to use for saving uh, those images out. PNG8 is like a GIF, also limited to 256 colors. But PNG24 is more like a JPEG, but also with the transparency ability. It's not limited to 256 colors, so you can use as many colors as you like. And it's great for drop shadows and filter effects that will blend with any background. Just to quickly look at the wireless bitmap or WBMP format. Um, you're not going to use this very often, but it's for older devices that don't have a color display. So for example, if we switch this to WBMP, it's going to switch to black and white, not even gray, just pure black and white. And it's going to use dithering for anything in between which, to be honest, is quite a horrible uh, effect and hopefully you won't have to use this very much. Just to look at the other two options, SWF, first of all, is vector-based graphics. It's the flash format. It's what flash files are exported as. And all of the other file types, except for SVG, are raster or bitmap. So when you save anything from Illustrator, say some vector graphics that you've created, when you save that as a JPEG or a GIF, or a PNG, it's going to be converted into a raster or bitmap image. 
if you save it as an SWF or an SVG, it's going to retain that vector quality, which means that you can scale up and down without losing any image quality whatsoever. If we select SWF, you'll see that Illustrator uses Flash Player 9. According to Adobe statistics, over 99% of home computers are compatible with Flash Player 9 at the moment, even though the latest version is, is beyond that over Flash Player 10. But you can be sure if you use Flash Player 9, it's going to work on any home computer. So you can use SWFs to create static vector files, or you can create simple animations using layers in Illustrator, which we're going to look at in a later tutorial. If you go to the File Export option and choose Flash SWF, you get quite a lot of extra options. So this just gives us an idea of how Save for Web is actually an independent application that used to be an application on its own. It's been incorporated into Illustrator and Photoshop. Just to look at SVG, which stands for Scalable Vector Graphics, these are vector-based graphics intended for web browsers and mobile devices. If you choose Save for Web and select SVG from the drop-down menu, or you can of course choose Save as SVG, and you get even more options in this way. Um, and most browsers come with the software available to display SVGs. Okay, so just we're going to look at adjusting dimensions of a graphic. So in Illustrator, graphics are scalable, but they'll usually be exported at a spe spe specific pixel size. So for example, this image we're looking at here is we're going to make it 33 by 250 pixels you'll notice that it's floating on a larger artboard in the background which itself is part of a larger document. If we choose File Save for Web and click on the Image Size tab there's a box there called Clip to Artboard. If we uncheck this Illustrator automatically resizes the image to fit to export the image at the exact size of our graphic. You can also change in the New Size text fields change the image or the graphic to any size that you want and the Illustrator will resize it automatically which is extremely useful if you need to save a particular graphic at a variety of sizes um, which means you don't have to go back into the Illustrator file and resize the actual image you can just do it from the Save for Web dialog box you can also optimize files to specific file sizes for example if you are designing a banner ad for Yahoo, they have a maximum file size for banner ads. If you go to Save for Web and choose the Flyout menu, you've got an option there called Optimize to File Size. If you, when the window pops up, select the size that you want the file to be, Illustrator will work out the rest for you. If you hold down the Alt key to reset after you select this instead of Cancel, and then switch to a JPEG, um, and then optimize the file size and just choose the auto menu just to allow Illustrator to work out all of the details for you and you can see the effect that is created from that. You can also modify the output settings in Save for Web so if you open the Save for Web and click Save and then look at HTML uh, or images you can save it just the image or just the HTML or, the, or both you can also export all the slices, or only the selected slices, or only user slices. If you select Other from the Settings menu, you can control lots of output options, which are grouped in four categories. You've got HTML, you've got Slices, you've got Background, and Saving Files. And you can spend quite a while just looking at all the options here, but essentially it all boils down to being able to modify the output settings in Save for Web depending on what your project is. And finally, we're just going to have a very quick look at Device Central. If you look at Save for Web and Devices uh, on the bottom left, you've got a button for Device Central, which will open your graphic or image in Device Central so that you can preview it on a specific mobile device, whether that's a Blackberry or an iPhone, iPad, and so on any kind of mobile device and it's very useful because you can actually simulate the functionality of the mobile device um, and also add sort of effects like as if you were looking at it outdoors or indoors and so on just to see what your graphics would look like under different settings and environments.